Hi everyone, this is Ashley Techie Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary, and today I'll be talking about herd immunity and dealing with COVID. And so I want to talk about herd immunity because often when we think about herd immunity, we think about uh, you know we think about immunizations and we think about vaccines. But I want to think about it in a different way, more as a preventative, because I think right now it looks like there is no end in sight for this pandemic and that this virus is going to be around for a while. So if this is the case, then we need to collectively and also individually start to look at what can we do to build our own immunity against this disease. And not even so much against the disease, but um, how do we make ourselves not a uh, you know, a not very, um, you know, uh, interesting host to this virus, right? So when I, when I think about herd immunity, um, everything that I'm going to be talking about today, I want you to be thinking about what are the things that you can do to make, sh to make your body um, the most resilient and also least susceptible to being a host for this virus, even if you get a mild version, because we know one thing about this virus is it's very sneaky and stealthy, and it can live in certain people and be spread asymptomatically. So, you know, even though, you know, you may be in a very low risk category, uh, we want to be thinking right now about how do I try to make the environment in my body um, very in hospitable to a virus and have my body be ready to respond to a virus if I am exposed. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Now, as a little disclaimer, I do want to say that what I'm going to be talking about is not 100% guaranteed to keep you from contracting COVID. Uh, nothing is 100% guaranteed with COVID or in life. <laughs> so, um, you know, what I'm going to be sharing with you are just some things that you can do because there's a lot that we can't do and there's a lot that is out of our control and out of our hands and is sort of up to up to God and up to um, the higher source in terms of, um, you know, what happens in our lives and, and um, you know, our own personal uh, destiny in, in relationship to COVID. So, you know, while there's a lot that's out of our control, there are things within our scope of control. So let's talk about those and let's see what those things are. So let's talk about some of the common sense things that everyone should be doing right now to keep their system strong. The first thing is making sure you're getting enough rest and this is a huge huge thing and it's free it's the least expensive thing on my list of things that you can do is try to get at least seven to eight hours of good sleep every night and if you're not getting good sleep try to make that a priority um, see an herbalist consult with a doctor an acupuncturist find someone who can help you look at your sleep um, and try to make sure that you're getting adequate and good sleep because this will have a huge effect on your um, on your on your immune system and also your cortisol levels which are also connected to your immune system the second thing you can do is watch what you're eating and we know this right we want to be eating lots of fruits and vegetables especially berries I would say because they're cardioprotective for the heart and for the arteries um, you know lots of vegetables lots of fiber whatever we can do to decrease the stress on the body right now so we want to be avoiding sugar especially caffeine alcohol processed foods um, you know so this is a really good time to get on on you know what my husband and I we call um, you know we're going to to um, uh, what do we call it? Like uh, Healthyville, USA. <laughs> so you want to get on the train to Healthyville right now um, because you know that's going to be really having a great effect on your system. The third thing is exercise. So you got to move. You got to move your body to keep your lymphatic system healthy. Your lymphatic system is part of your immune system. So if your fluids are getting stagnant, your immune system is also probably more sluggish. So get lots and lots of exercise. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of home videos, exercise videos in my house. Um, you can download them. There's a bunch on YouTube for free. Also getting outside and trying to get some fresh air and move and just take some deep breaths. Yoga is a great practice, but whatever you can do to move your body. 
social contact in a healthy way. So uh, we are social creatures. So make sure that you're reaching out to people. You know, call, make a call once a day to someone in your family or a friend. Um, you know, try to get on a Zoom meeting. You know, get into um, discussions on your favorite, um, you know, group meetup pages or, or Facebook pages, you know, try to engage socially. That's also really, really good for our, both our immunity um, and also just really good for our psychological well-being. And then last thing is spiritual practices. And as any of you know who watch my channel regularly or listen to my podcasts, um, my husband and I, we both are very you know, strong practitioners in bhakti yoga. And so I can't imagine trying to go through this pandemic without having daily spiritual practices like meditation and mantra. Um, those are our practices. But what is it that you can do? You know, what are the, the spiritual practices that you can commit to every day just to help you feel centered and connected to something larger than yourself? And uh, it's really, really important, I think, during these times to have an active spiritual practice. Okay. Then, of course, on top of that, you want to be doing all of the things we are being asked to do by the Centers of Disease Control um, and by um, the World Health Organization, which is social distancing, um, wearing a mask to protect yourself and also to spread, uh, to, to prevent the spread of the disease because a lot of people that are not symptomatic or pre-symptomatic can still spread the disease and also washing your hands a lot. So keep washing, you know, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer um, that is still gonna be very effective. Okay, so that's kind of all the that's kind of all the things that we can do more lifestyle related. Now, I wanted to talk for a moment about the herbs. So herbal medicines, we've been using them for since we have been you know uh, crawling around on four legs. <laughs> you know, goats use herbs to heal themselves. Dogs will go eat certain types of grasses to heal themselves. Chimpanzees, bonobos, all primates use herbs as medicines, and you know we are. A primate. Um, so we have been using herbal medicines to help balance our bodies, shift our inner ecology, and to um, get rid of diseases. So herbs are, are uh, they're a part of our history, they're a part of our physiology. Our bodies have adapted to use plant medicines. They, um, they're also relatively safe. So, you know, in, in contrast to some of the pharmaceuticals that are out there, um, herbal medicines are, are much safer because they seem to have um, more buffers that prevent um, some of the stronger compounds from having adverse effects. Now, having said that, you still, you know, if you are on any medications or if you uh, do have any pre-existing conditions, you may want to speak to a um, registered clinical herbalist, you can find one at the American Herbalists Guild.org and look up um, look up uh, a registered herbalist in your area or if you are from another country, you can try to find the, um, the registry of clinical herbalists in your country and try to find someone that's qualified to work with um, to help you make sure that the protocol that you're on is safe for you. Um, the other thing about herbs is that you have to take them regularly. So everything that I'm going to be talking about today, you have to do on a regular basis. It's not going to, you know, one of my teachers, Diane Connolly from Thai Sophia would say, you know, these things, it's not a one walk dog. You can't just walk your dog once and say, okay, I walked my dog. Now I'm good. Like you have to do it every single day. You have to walk your dog every day. So with these herbs, you have to take them regularly. So if you're not good at taking things regularly, set a timer on your phone, um, make notes, put post-it sticky notes, put your herbs like where I do in, in on my kitchen counter. So they're out in plain view, put your nighttime herbs by your toothbrush, right? So make sure that it's a priority that you are uh, really making sure you're taking these herbs on a regular basis for them to work. All right, now, in exciting news, um, herbalist and uh, ecologist and virologist and prolific writer, um, Stephen Buhner has recently published a 112 page paper on COVID looking at um, its transmission, prevention, treatment strategies, and then also um, some of the treatment strategies for treating long people that are having long-term post-COVID effects. So this page, uh, this paper is available on his website, Stephen 
herodbuner.com. I'll post that um, in the comments section um, on my YouTube page. So um, if you want to look at the full paper, you can look it up there. Just a bit of a background on Stephen, um, Stephen Buner. He is um, a long time herbalist. He's published books on, and some of the leading books on herbal medicine treatments for Lyme disease. Um, herbal, he's published a book on herbal antibiotics. But one thing that I really love about him, which really endears me to his work, especially on COVID, is that the way he views viruses and bacteria is not that this is a war against the virus, but rather we are living among, you know, he's, he's an ecologist. So, you know, we're really thinking about we are living among bacteria and viruses, and we will continue to for the rest of our time on this planet. So how do we live with them? How do we make our bodies, like I said at the beginning of this video, um, a not very great environment for them to live in? So how do we strengthen in our own systems and create our own inner resilience so that the virus can go somewhere else, right? I don't want to kill off the virus. I just want it to go somewhere else, not in my neighbors and not in my friends, not in my family. Go somewhere else. Go to, you know, other animals. And then the animal's immunity will help fight it off because clearly it's not, you know, it's, it's really damaging for the human host. So um, his book, The Plant Intelligence and the Imaginal Realm, is one of my favorite books by Stephen Buhner um, because he really helps, he really helped me to understand the role of viruses and bacteria on this planet and, um, and how changing our approach to seeing them and working with them um, is part of how we heal and how, part of how we uh, work with them. Okay, so now Stephen Buhner, published this great long paper, and he recommended four strategies in the prevention of contracting COVID. And this, he calls these pre-treatment strategies. So this is again, whether you get it or not get it, this is what you wanna do to A, prevent your body from maybe getting a really severe case of COVID, but also um, using these herbs um, so that if you, um, so that you can prevent from, from contracting it at all. So you can lessen the side effects of the virus and the effects of the virus. And you can also try to actually maximize your immune response and your body's resilience. So if you, so, um, so that you might be able to fight it off before you even actually, you know, get a bad case, right? Or get even a mild case, right? Okay. <laughs> so this is gonna be a little, this is, this is, there's gonna be a lot of information. You may want to pause and write things down. I'm also going to write down all the herbal names and the amounts um, on my YouTube uh, page. That way you guys can have them. And my YouTube page is skyhouseherbs.com or skyhouseherbs <laughs> is my YouTube page in case you're listening to this on a podcast. Okay, so the first strategy is supporting a robust immune system. And so there's a specific herbal formula he has that I will share with you. The second is taking a systemic anti-inflammatory because one of the things that COVID does is it creates systemic inflammation, um, especially in the, in the endothelial tissues of the body. The third thing we want to take is an anticoagulant because um, strokes and um, myocardial infarctions and uh, a, a lot of adverse heart um, effects have been found with COVID infection. So taking something that will prevent clotting is going to be very, very helpful. And the fourth thing is taking a fibrinolytic uh, a supplement. So fibrin is the connective tissue that our body uses to repair damaged tissues. It's basically scar tissue. So we can take, um, there are a number of supplements that I'm going to recommend that Stephen recommends that you can take to stop your body from overproducing fibrin as a response to COVID or an infection that will create um, excessive fibrin production. Okay, so those are the four things. Now we're going to go into them one by one. The pre-infection immune tincture formula. Now this was created by Stephen Buhner. I'm gonna tell you each herb um, and the parts to use. Now the parts to use, you can think about each part as being equal to an ounce. If you do, if you create it in this way, what it will do is it will create a large, maybe three month supply for you. If you can't 
afford that much, then you can just, you know, do it by ounces, okay? You can use each part as an ounce. This formula is a tincture. And while I understand that everyone loves tinctures because they do have alcohol in them, it truly is the easiest and the best way to extract these herbs and also to use these herbs um, um, to, to preserve these herbs. So, so I'm gonna recommend that you stick with a tincture formula for this particular protocol. Now, all of the herbs in this protocol are, um, they're adaptogenic, so that means they help the body adapt to stress, which means they modulate cortisol levels on the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Now we know that elevated cortisol levels um, has a reflexive uh, decreasing effect on the immune system. So when our stress levels are high, um, often our immune system is uh, suppressed, okay? Especially over long periods of time when cortisol is elevated. So these herbs are both adaptogens and they're also, um, they also immunomodulators, which means they help your body uh, modulate and increase immune activity when needed and decrease it when it's not needed. So it basically it's kind of like, um, you know, tr it's like, uh, you know, like a workout, like, <laughs> you know, a boot camp kind of for your immune system to get it ready to respond. And um, also specifically the first herb, Eleutherococcus centicosis, which is also called Siberian ginseng, has been shown specifically to help with um, COVID or SARS related um, immunity and also um, helping the body respond to stress from viral attacks or viral, higher viral loads, okay? So here are the herbs in the formula. Eleutherococcus, which is two parts, astragalus, two parts, cordyceps, one part, rhodiola, one part, and glyceriza, also known as licorice, one part. Now, if you have high blood pressure or you're on blood pressure medication, you should take out the licorice um, and you can substitute something like reishi. Reishi is a wonderful, ganoderma um, is the, the Latin name, um, and that would be a really good one um, to add in, either in addition to or in as a substitute for licorice. I will say licorice does seem to have really, really protective effects, um, you know, for the um, the veins and arteries and the, and the endothelial structures. So, you know, ideally you can have that in your formula, but if not, then take it out. The dosage for that is one teaspoon three times a day. Another thing that I would recommend that you add into this pre-infection um, strategy is taking vitamin D. And I would recommend taking vitamin D3, taking 2000 IUs daily. Um, there have been a correlation. They've seen that people that have um, higher, um, you know, I would say maybe like a worse outcome with COVID, with COVID infection have low D3 levels in their blood. So we want to Again, in, whatever we can do to increase our body's ability to be resistant to and to have maybe a, a more mild version of this as we build immunity um, is really important. So 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 and just take that once a day. Now, the second part of Buner's strategy is using a systemic anti-inflammatory and he gives two options here. The first one is Mangifera indica, which is um, mango. And this is, I believe it's mango leaf. I have to double check that. But it's, uh, but this is a, this is a standardized extract. So I don't want you using mango leaf. Use this um, standardized extract. Um, there is a company called, um, he mentions it, it's called Dragon Herbs, I believe. I'll have to put that in the chat box too, or the comment box. Um, but you want to use Mangifera indica, standardized to 60% Mangiferin. And this particular uh, standardized extract has been shown to be anti-inflammatory specifically for the kinds of inflammation seen in damaged lung tissue and other damaged or, or, organs um, related specifically to COVID infections. And there's been a ton of studies that have shown um, that it has this protective effect. So that's one, comp one thing you can take. The dosage is one to three capsules, three times a day. So if you weigh 150 pounds or more, three capsules, if you weigh less, one to two capsules, three times a day.
The other um, herb that he recommends that can be used for systemic, as a systemic anti-inflammatory is Japanese knotweed. And um, this is one of the polygonatum species. And um, this is another great option because it stabilizes endothelial structures, which are at high risk of damage with COVID-19. It's also high in reservatrol, which is an antioxidant. And um, you know, it's a generally, it's a good one to take. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good sort of anti-aging herb. <laughs> so we're all aging. So you could just take it sort of just generally to prevent oxidation and to uh, prevent the damaging effects of oxidation, but especially right now because of the, you know, the possible damage that COVID can do to these structures in the body. The dosage is one teaspoon three times a day. The third strategy is using an anticoagulant because what we've been seeing is that um, a lot of young people without any other symptoms are having strokes. Um, they're having, you know, uh, blood clots and also um, heart damage. And so whatever we can do to decrease the uh, ability for the heart or the ability of the body to be producing these small clots. And there was one, there was one study that Stephen Buhner cited in his paper where there was like, they, they took like, I think it was like 50 or 60 um, CT scans for people with COVID. And even in like healthy young people, they found that there were like hundreds of clots just floating throughout their bodies. And, you know, most of them not causing problems, but just, it just takes one clot to get big enough to cause uh, a, an ischemic heart attack or to cause a, um, to cause a stroke in the brain. So, we, you know, we want to be very, very careful here. So anticoagulant, the one that he recommends is L-malic acid. That's L hyphen malic, M-A-L-I-C acid, 600 milligrams daily. This will prevent, uh, or this will prepare the body if uh, an infection does occur. So it will, it's basically sort of a gentle anticoagulant. Some people take baby aspirin as a um, as a daily anticoagulant. So that could be an option, although it does have some damaging effects potentially long-term on the liver and on the stomach lining. So L-malic acid seems to be, have less adverse reactions, but still it has that anticoagulant or blood thinning effect. Now, if you are on blood thinners, you're gonna need to consult a doctor um, before taking the supplement. Um, the fourth strategy is taking a fibrinolytic compound. This is something that is going to, um, reduce the amount of scar tissue formed in the body with an active infection. So the two compounds he recommends are lumbrokinase, L-U-M-B-R-O-K-I-N-A-S-E, I believe this is an enzyme, one capsule in the morning and one capsule in the evening. And this stops the overproduction of fibrin or scar tissue, specifically in the lungs. It also modulates temperature fluctuations, which we see in COVID. We have these spikes in temperature, these spikes in drops and chills and fever. It also relieves sinus congestion and breaks down mucus in the lungs. The second um, option for a fibrinolytic, which is a little bit gentler, is natokinase, another enzyme, which is um, N-A-T-T-O-K-I-N-A-S-E. This one is best for mild hypercoagulation. So again, it's a little bit more gentle and it breaks down fibrin and scarring in the lungs and the body as well. So both of these can be taken one capsule in the morning, one capsule in the evening as a preventative. They also both um, enhance circulatory health. All right. Now, <laughs> there's one other thing that, um, that is not in his prevention protocol, but is worth talking about, which is heart health. And I think right now we need to protect the heart in a number of ways. As I mentioned, we're seeing a lot of strokes and, and, and blood clotting and circulatory issues in people that are both symptomatic and asymptomatic carriers of COVID. Um, we're also finding that there's a lot of long-term heart damage found with people who contract COVID-19, especially myocarditis or inflammation of the myocardium. And, um, this can occur again in young people. So people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s can have long-term heart damage. So what can we do to prevent heart damage physiologically? And then also thinking about heart damage, um, 
kind of more emotionally. And I, and I feel like right now it, it's worth saying because as an American, like there is such a divide in our country right now. It's, it's heartbreaking. It, to me, my heart it breaks for our country right now. And it makes me so sad um, just to see the divide. And um, I know that I'm not alone in feeling this way. So I think our country and the world right now is, is experiencing a lot of grief, a lot of sadness, um, a lot of heartache. You know, we can't see our loved ones. Um, one of my good friends, fathers died of COVID a few months ago. She couldn't be with him. He died alone, you know, and, and that breaks my heart. And I, I think we need to feel that, like we need to feel, we need to feel our hearts right now. And we need to be aware of, the effect that this is having, that this pandemic is having on our hearts. And so taking herbs that are going to be um, both strengthening for our heart and healing for our heart right now, and also, again, physiologically protecting our hearts from damage um, on a physical level, I think is so crucial. So the number one herb I would recommend is Hawthorne. Hawthorne is very easy to find. This is Crataegus, C-R-A-T-E-A-G-U-S. Sorry, A E G U S, Crataegus. There's a lot of different species. There's Monogena, there's Oxyacantha, there's Lavigata. Um, so, any of those um, Crataegus species would be really good to take right now. And I recommend taking both the berry and the leaves and the flowers. So, this is a, comp this is a formula, um, this is a solid extract that I have been taking daily. This is David Winston. He has a company called Herbalist and Alchemists. You can buy this online. And um, this is a solid extract of hawthorn berries. And it tastes like a jelly. It's like, um, it's like a really herbal jelly. And you can just take a teaspoon of that daily, but then also drink a tea of the flowers and the leaves, or you can take a tincture of the flower and the leaves. Um, for the flower and leaves, it's a tincture. I would take a dropper to two droppers full daily, maybe even twice a day, maybe two dropper fulls twice a day. Um, and if you're drinking a tea, um, do an overnight infusion, about a quarter cup of the leaves and flowers in a quart of water, let it steep in hot water is important. Let it steep overnight and then strain it and then drink it throughout the day. Um, it can also have a blood pressure lowering effect. So if you're finding that your blood pressure is higher from the stress, then taking um, Hawthorne, you might find that I've had it do that. I mean, it's really well known, especially the overnight infusion of the flowers and leaves can really have a, a helpful effect on lowering blood pressure. If you have low blood pressure, be aware of that. You might notice that it drops down, so just lower your dose. Um, so yeah, so I think that that would be a good thing for everyone to take right now um, because of the, the emotional impact, but also because of the physiological protective capacity of this plant. And um, I wanted to also mention a few spirit herbs that you might find helpful to take. And I've listed them kind of in three different categories. So you might find one or two that really resonate. And um, if you're feeling really depressed right now, if you're feeling like um, just heaviness in your heart, sad, if you're feeling grief, um, an herb that can be very uplifting without, uh, but also be reducing anxiety is mimosa. So I recommend uh, a tincture of mimosa bark and flower, and you can take three drops three times a day. Mimosa is called the happiness tree. It's just very uplifting, um, brightening, and um, yeah, really lifts the mood. So if, if you're feeling like that's uh, where you are emotionally, try that spirit herb. Um, if you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed, frazzled, just like, ah, you know, like you just can't handle things, like you're kind of on your own edge, like you feel like you're, you're about to kind of like, you know, dive off a cliff, you know, if you're feeling that level of overwhelm, a really good spirit herb for that state is passion flower, um, passiflower, uh, passiflora incarnata. And you can take that as a tincture, three dot drops, three times a day. Um, if you're experiencing really high anxiety, you can take more as more of a therapeutic dose, like a teaspoon a few times a day. But as a spirit herb, it will just sort of gently calm the frazzled, frazzled edges of your spirit and kind of bring things back into cohesion. 
And then the third one is if you're feeling a lot of fear, a lot of, um, if you're afraid, if you're feeling a lot of fear, you're feeling scared, maybe you're feeling trapped or you're feeling stuck. Um, if those are the, the dominant emotions, then one of my favorite herbs for that is Angelica Archangelica. And this is a very warming, stimulating herb. Um, it moves your blood, it increases circulation. And I think of it as sort of like a white halo of protection around the body. And so if you feel like you're just really um, succumbing to a lot of fear in the media, or just, you know, you're feeling a lot of fear in your environment, maybe you work in the healthcare field and, you know, you're afraid to go to work and you're feeling like you just want sort of some angelic protection, take three drops, um, you know, three times a day or more. Any of these can be taken more than three times a day, of course. But Angelica is a very, it's, it's just like, again, like I just think of it like as a white blanket of protection around the body and it moves stuck energy. So you can give that a try. All right, well, that was a lot of information. I hope some of it was helpful for you. Again, I think this idea of building herd immunity is so important right now. You know, taking personal responsibility for our health, for our community's health, and doing our part to, um, you know, strengthen our own resilience and protecting ourselves and our loved ones the best we can. So please type in the comments section, uh, let me know uh, what you're doing, you know, what are the practices and things you're doing to both prevent and pre-treat yourself um, in this time of COVID-19. Um, let me know if there's any other herbal allies that you might also recommend or have found helpful and uh, again, thank you for watching, um, for being uh, a part of, of this station um, and this channel and this podcast. Um, I, it's been so fun to watch the numbers grow. Um, and especially during this transition in my life, as you can see, I'm in a new location. Um, we recently moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we're loving it. We're so happy here. Um, it's just a really... Uh, it's a big change from the DC <laughs> energy. It's, it's much more relaxed and, and peaceful. And um, yeah, I look forward to being able to create more content for you all. Um, there's been a little bit of a lag in content because we've been moving. So I look forward to teaching you about the flora of this part of the United States. And um, also continuing, I, I have in my mind, um, I'm gonna be, doing more COVID related um, talks uh, pertaining to Stephen Buhner's um, protocols because they're just really, really good. So keep an eye out for those as well. And if there's anything else that you would like me to talk about, let me know. I'm, I'm always open to hearing what would be helpful for, for you all too. So thank you so much for watching. Take good care of yourselves. Get sleep, drink water, get some exercise, give yourself a big hug, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care. Bye.